This module is a little conceptual discussion about the difference between relative and absolute paths. It is included simply for your understanding of some of the things that you are typing. We don't learn any new commands in this chapter. So, consider the following file. Slash users, slash tom, slash business, slash reports, slash june, slash sales.txt. So it's the sales.txt file inside the june directory, which is a subdirectory of reports, which is a subdirectory of business, which is blah, 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 all the way up to user. Now, if you wanted to access that particular file, if you needed to print it out or edit it or do something to it, how would you refer to it? Well, that would depend on where you were. Your current directory would determine the name of the file that you needed to type in in order to access that particular file. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you were in the slash user slash tom directory, in other words, if your current directory was slash user slash tom, then what would you type in to get sales.txt? Well, you'd simply type in business slash report slash june slash sales.txt. In other words, if you're in slash user slash tom and you're trying to get to that full file name, then you need to specify every subdirectory underneath the current one. Notice that the file path that you're specifying does not begin with a slash. Let's have a look at some more examples so you can compare that with some other examples. If you happen to be in that same directory, slash user slash tom business reports June, then all you need to type to get to sales.txt is sales.txt. And when I say get to sales.txt, I mean you might want to uh, cat it or moor it or head it or tail it or, or ls it or something like that. So you might type in cat space sales.txt, whereas in the previous example, you might type in cat space business slash report slash june slash sales.txt and so on. A couple more examples. If you are in the root directory, it is possible to access that file from the root directory you would type in user tom biz blah 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 the whole thing but you wouldn't type in the initial slash another example this is a kind of a trickier one what if you were in a subdirectory of june called say drafts how would you access it then well think about what we talked about in the last chapter with dot and dot dot is there a way to go if you like, upper level to the parent directory, yes there is. It is dot dot slash sales.txt. In other words, go back up to the parent directory. And now if you're in the drafts directory, your parent directory is going to be the June directory, because it's the one above you. And inside the June directory, then there you'll find sales.txt. So what you can see here is that the name of the file that you need to type in in order to access sales.txt differs depending on where you happen to be at the time. It's quite interesting to note that. Of course, now this obviously the simplest thing to type in is just sales.txt, but in order to type that in, you have to be in the same directory as sales.txt. But I, pl I want you please to understand that you can access sales.txt from no matter where you are. Now, keeping all that in mind, let's have a look at the following important points. If there was no such thing as a current directory, then we would always have to use the full path, the full file name, for any file that we wanted to access. Let me show you what you would have to type in any time you want to access a file. You'd have to type in that, that whole thing, slash user, slash time, business, there would be no shortcut to it. You wouldn't be able to go into the June directory and then just type in sales.txt. You'd have to type in the whole thing every time. And that, that whole thing, is known as an absolute path. It's absolute because it doesn't matter where you are at the time. If you type in that whole thing, including the forward slash at the beginning, then you will always be able to access the file. Absolute path has an advantage that it never changes depending on where you are, you can be anywhere and the absolute path to a file is always the same. But the disadvantage is that it can be very, very lengthy to type. In other words, inconvenient. Now, this inconvenience was so great that th that was why the notion of a current directory was created in the first place. 
the notion of having a current directory and the ability to change it by using the CD program to move around enables you to go to places such as the June directory and type in simpler, shorter names for accessing the files that you want to. So when you go into a particular directory and type in the name of a file in that shorter, simpler way, that file name that you typed in is known as a relative path. Relative because it is a path relative to where you happen to be at the time. And if you move around, the path to that file will move around with you, always relative to your current location. The way to tell the difference between a relative path and an absolute path is quite simple. If the path begins with a forward slash, if the very first character is a forward slash, then it is an absolute path. Otherwise, it's a relative path. It's very simple. Any Unix program can handle any relative paths or absolute paths or even a mixture of both in the same program if you need to. And that's about all there is to it. That's relative and absolute paths.